it just hurts to see how they took him out like that. It's just sad and it hurts. They were just good people, good neighbors, people who you learn to love and respect. We're asking the public to please help us. Um, we need to find who murdered my grandparents. It's very important for us to have closure in our lives. Boy, I just can't explain it. I have no idea why it would happen. That's the first thing. If they are planned on just trying to rob them, I, it sounds like he or they, I don't know which, uh, went in, opened the door, and immediately shot them. Claudette and Major Melvin were pillars of their community in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Married for over five decades, they were known for their kindness, generosity, and unwavering commitment to helping others. Both in their late 80s, they had spent more than 50 years in the same home, creating a lifetime of memories within its walls. On a fateful day in March, tragedy struck this beloved couple, shattering the tranquility of their neighborhood and leaving their family and friends reeling in shock and disbelief. It was a typical Friday morning when their lives were brutally cut short in an act of senseless violence. Welcome to Explore Crimes. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. We spent the afternoon talking to people in this neighborhood. One woman said she heard screams. Another woman said she heard gunfire. It was last Saturday around 7 o'clock that someone walked into this home and killed the elderly couple inside before taking off in their car. For decades, Major Melvin and his wife Claudette called this yellow home on the corner of Southwest 30th Terrace and Fort Lauderdale home. He was a great guy, him and both his wife. Neighbors like Ivan Jackson say the couple well into their 80s were kind and kept to themselves. You took two precious lives. For what? Friday evening, someone went into the home and shot the two. The couple's daughter, Tanya Mitchell, received a call that would forever change her life. The harrowing news of her parents' untimely deaths has left her and her family in shock. Alongside her sister, she immediately made the journey from North Carolina to her parents' home in Fort Lauderdale. The gravity of the situation weighs heavily on them as they grapple with the incomprehensible loss of Claudette and Major M When we walked in, it was the hardest thing of our life. We don't have a clue as to who would do this to them. They're the sweetest people that you ever would have known. I can't say anything negative about either one because I've just always been there for anyone. Both of them were shot, from what I understand, for 9 millimeter. All they found at the house was the casings. Whoever did this did not take the money that was in his pocket, didn't take the cell phone, didn't take the money that was in her purse and all the valuables. The only thing stolen was the couple's car that was parked in the driveway, swiped after the murders. Here's a picture of the car, a 2014 Red Ford Fusion with the Florida tag reading LTDQ16. The car has a scratch on the rear driver's side door and dents on the back bumper. This has really took a toll on all of us. And I just need the public help in finding them. The car is out there. And now we're hearing the chilling calls to 911 as police continue searching for the killer. And Local 10's Terrell Cornet joining us live now from Port Lauderdale with this developing story. Terrell. And as you will hear in that 911 call, the relative who actually phoned it in is still trying to process exactly the news that she has been given. But nonetheless, the murder of that elderly couple here inside of this home has this entire Melrose Park neighborhood on edge. As landscaping crews haul away trees and brush from a home turned devil murder scene, a wave of concern continues to spread throughout the neighborhood. When I wake up, I worry. Even when I go to bed, I worry because who did it and why? A relative found the bodies and called another family member who then dialed 911. Yes, I need y'all to get to Fort Lauderdale. My brother just called me. I don't have my car. I can't get over there. Oh, Jesus. Detectives have been told nothing of value was stolen except for the couple's car. We didn't hear any gunshots or anything like that. If we would, like, I have my windows open over there, we would have heard a shot. What I heard was a big truck, and I called 
police that night. That call to police was just hours before the couple was believed to have been murdered. Arguing or screaming? Oh, no, 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 no okay. arguing, no nothing. It was just the truck itself came up, woke me up out of my sleep. Okay. 18 Willow. That truck, say neighbors, was out of place and parked in front of the home of the victims. It's unclear, though, if there's any connection to the crime that took the lives of a couple described as church-going matriarchs and patriarchs of the block. He was a great guy. Him and both his wife. They were, they were very giving to the community. Whatever happened there is weird. And neighbors tell us that several officers from Fort Lauderdale PD did respond in the hours before that couple was found dead here inside of that home to that suspicious incident involving that truck, but no word yet on the outcome of that incident. Nonetheless, we know that uh, investigators, they are still trying to find the couple's red car. They want people in the community to be very vigilant, to keep an eye out and give them a call if perhaps they come across this red vehicle. You can also contact Broward Crime Stoppers with any information. And now to a break in the case after a beloved couple was found shot to death inside their own home in Local 10's Sinella Sabovic is live in Fort Lauderdale with the new details tonight. Sinella. Well, Calvin, definitely a major break in the case here. This vehicle was a primary focus of this investigation. It was found in April. We are just learning about it now. There was an arrest made in the theft of that car. However, no arrest just yet in these murders. On March 22nd, Major and Claudette Melvin, an elderly couple in their 80s, were found shot to death inside their Fort Lauderdale home. On the same day, their Red Ford Fusion was stolen from their driveway and immediately became the center of the investigation. About two weeks after the murders, the car was located at a tow yard in Wilton Manors. Detectives identified the person who sold it to the tow company as 30-year-old Maurice Anthony Newson. They say he took it on the same day the Melvins were killed, represented it as his own car, and sold it for $200. He was arrested on May 23rd and charged with theft of a motor vehicle and dealing in stolen property. Detectives are still trying to see if Newson was involved in the murders. According to an arrest warrant, family members told police, quote, Maurice had been coming around the home following the homicide, acting strange, and asking a lot of questions about what detectives were saying about the investigation. Newson was at one point in a relationship with the Melvin's granddaughter. She voluntarily submitted to a polygraph test, and detectives say she was untruthful on the question of being involved in the death of her grandparents. Investigators say the granddaughter gave conflicting information in regards to who was to inherit the Melvin's home. This has really took a toll on all of us. The Melvin's children have been heartbroken since their deaths and want to see justice served. We just need some closure. We just need to know. A granddaughter of the murder couple is mentioned in the arrest warrant document. She was interviewed by investigators around the time the man accused of stealing the car was arrested. Apparently, they knew each other very well. According to Fort Lauderdale Police, 30-year-old Maurice Anthony Newson stole the couple's vehicle hours after the crime. Had you heard from this subject before? No. As far as this perpetrator uh, right now, uh, we're just working with the detective. Fort Lauderdale Police released a 23 pages arrest warrant of Newson, where they included interviews with a couple's granddaughter, which the detective does not reveal the woman's identity, but wrote during the interview, she changed her answers on questions she was previously asked, who was in line to receive the grandparents' house upon their passing. In previous interviews, she stated that she and her mother would be the sole heirs of the residents. In this interview, she stated she was never next in line to receive her grandparents' home. On page 20, detectives addressed the suspect with the same woman and wrote, she provided a photograph of Maurice Newson Jr. She stated that they had been in a romantic relationship in the past. She provided that Maurice came to the residence following the homicide. This is the first time you're hearing about this man? Right now, I can't totally answer that question. Um, what is happening is it's an ongoing investigation, and we're not sure where we are with a, making an arrest, but we're just hoping and praying that uh, the evidence will lead to this person that that took our parents away. Mitchell tells me since March 22nd, the family has not been able to rest. Maurice Newson has been out on bond since last May. 
Today, police are urging the public, if anybody has any information on this case, it is crucial that you contact Crime Stoppers of Broward. Remember, your identity can remain anonymous. The details of the crime were as chilling as they were heartbreaking. The couple had been targeted within the very sanctuary they called home. It appeared that the perpetrator or perpetrators had gained access through an unlocked door, catching Major Melvin off guard as he lay on the couch. Claudette, in another part of the house, was also taken by surprise and met a similar tragic fate. In the wake of the tragedy, the community rallied around the grieving family, offering support and solace in their darkest hour. A GoFundMe page was set up to assist with funeral expenses and provide financial support to the family as they navigated the aftermath of the devastating loss. The search for justice remained ongoing, fueled by a collective determination to bring closure to the grieving family and ensure that those responsible were held accountable for their heinous actions. The memory of Claudette and Major Melvin lived on in the hearts of all who knew them, their legacy of love and kindness enduring despite the senseless violence that claimed their lives. As the community mourned their loss, they remained steadfast in their resolve to honor their memory and seek justice in their names. In this time of profound grief and loss, may the family and friends of Claudette and Major Melvin find solace in the cherished memories and love they shared. May the outpouring of support from their community serve as a source of comfort during this difficult time, and may they find strength in each other as they navigate the path forward. May Claudette and Major Melvin rest in eternal peace, their spirits forever cherished, and their legacy of kindness and compassion enduring in the hearts of all who knew them. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video.